The first of the set that we're going to be opening is Commander Faceless Menace. So just gonna grab it from over here. Here we go. It's a bit hard to actually slide out. Okay, there we go. Oh, before we move on, I'm gonna just before we move on, I'm just gonna show you what's on the back of the box. So choose your commander and carve your path to victory. In this unique multiplayer magic format, team up with Kadena and deploy a shape-shifting force of morph creatures to um, ambush your opponents. Then take them down one by one. Since she fell out of favor among the Silmuk, Kadena has schemed from the shadows, waiting on her chance to reclaim her station. She camouflages her spies with obscuring magic, hoarding information and influence until she can claw her way back to the power she craves. So we're going to get one deck box, 100 cards with 17 new cards, and 10 double-sided tokens. Okay. Get this out. Just going to show you this. So we got one giant jumble foil card. It's around the size of my hand. So this is the box you're going to get your faceless menace in. As you can see, it just slides out like this. Okay. Clever, canny, and shrewd, Kadena is always looking for a chance to claw her way to power within her blood. She maintains a network of spies who keep her informed of everything happening within the ranks of power. This hoard of information is kept in preparation for the day when she throws off all pretenses and seizes power for herself. Ah, big schemer, aren't you? There, Kadena. All right. Rai... Rayami? Oh, Rayami. When the El Razi was imprisoned, some of the citizens of Zendikar, like Rayami, tried to set them free. His close connection to those cosmic beings transformed him into a vampire, one of the progenitors of the entire race. In Rayami, insatisfable bloodlust and El Razi madness combined into a singular drive for destruction. Okay, there's a picture. Volsrath. Shape Stealer. The Shape Stealer Voltzrat has been fascinated by the human body and how it can twist. He took full advantage of his power as Invaker of Frat to perform cruel and extreme experiments. Oh no. On his test subjects, both willing and unwilling. Each new victim that enters his laboratory reveals another insight into the limits of the human body and how to break them. Alright. Looks pretty friendly. Okay, so this is Grismold, the Dreads Wover, deep in the forest of an unnamed plain, the troll Grismold has formed a symbiotic relationship with the strange carnivorous plants that live among them. The trees, they feast on the corpses he brings back for them, and he feasts on their nectar, an unusually rich, invigorating source of nutrients. Okay, on the back, just gonna get the details of the actual deck itself. So when you're playing this deck, nothing's as it seems for your opponent. Fill the board with face-down creatures using Kadena, Slinking Sorcerer, and the Morph mechanic. Each turn you can keep Kadena in play means more chances to draw cards and play a face-down card for free, making more mana available to turn your creature face up or cast your spells. If you don't have a creature with a Morph ability ready to cast, you should probably hold back Kadena until the moment when she gives you the greatest value. Okay, Rayami. Verse of the Fallen has more than one way to help you defeat your opponents. Just getting this legend into play will, be, will make life difficult for any player trying to reuse their dying creatures, which is handy, but your primary focus should be building, an, building a smog's board of keyword abilities among the creature he exiles. Each keyword gained makes Rayami more dangerous, and those buffs persist for Rayami throughout the game. Play your cards right, and your opponent will find themselves at the mercy of the indestructible, hexproof, tampering, life-linking commander. 
The third legendary option for this deck is a doozy, the villainous Volrite, the Shape Stealer. Make no mistake about it, Volrite is a major combat threat, but it's a shape changing ability that makes you bound to give your opponents fits. Copy a Mega Morph Den Protector to swing for 7 damage, or swing or shrink your opponent's biggest threat and steal its ability for yourself. Remember that Volrat's combat damage is always commander damage, regardless of the creature you're copying. This is just basically the rules to play commander. It's, I'm pretty sure you all know already, so let's dive right into the deck. Oh, this is a pretty meaty deck. Alright. Oh, here we go. Take this out over here. Oh, here's Kadena. She's currently going for around $25 at the moment, although that is subject to change. There you go. So one of the biggest faces of this deck. Ryami. Our second commander. And who do we have here? Volrat, the Shape Stealer. Stealing the spotlight from Riyami right behind him. At the beginning of combat on your turn, putting 1-1 one, one minus counter on up to one target creature. Until your next turn, Volrat, the Shape Stealer, becomes a copy of the target creature with a counter on it, except it's 7-5 and has its ability. Oh, that's pretty neat. Okay, just going to show you... All the cards now. Firstly, we have the Suffering. Double sided renumber, manifest. Suffering again. More Sufferings. Oh, here we go. Assassin. With a morph. Just want to make sure you guys got a good look at all the cards. This product is currently retailing for around 35 euros, I believe, but that's on the low end of the spectrum. Pretty sure you can find a good deal on it. I bought it online for a little bit over 100 bucks. Leadership Vacuum. Mire and Misery. Voice of Manny. Scaratella. So this is probably going to be a tricolor deck. So blue, black, and green. Is it Willbender? I mean, aside from Volrat, I'm not too sure if there are any cards worth of much other value or significant other value in this deck. That said though, I'm going to be playing this game I'm going to be playing Commander. Hmm, I've kind of lost for words, but I'm going to be playing Commander a couple of times with all these decks put together. That way I can tell you exactly if these are kind of worth playing, are they very well balanced against each other. At the moment, this is the first time we're actually going to see it. This product comes out tomorrow, I believe. So plenty of time there. Oh, lots of island cards. Unique artwork. Kadena's Silencer. Alright, I kind of like how they separate each pile of cards by the mana. Oh, <laughs> spoke too soon. Gift of Doom. Teething Amalgram. Apex Altsasaur. Road of Return. Oh, Grimsward the Dreads Wover. There you go. He's the one that has a symbiotic relationship with the trees. This is why plants are scary. So, ghastly conscription. This is oh, getting quite a bit of mythic cards here. The Hydra, Rask, the Unseen. Okay, so I think this is the third most expensive card in the deck. So there you go. Honestly, I can't really wait to play this on my Magic Monday nights. Stratus Dancer. 
Like a lot of people who come to around my events tend not to either be coming back into Magic or haven't played it in a long time. So having these pre-built decks just to play different formats is really nice. I was playing with the, uh, what you call, mm -hmm, guild decks and guild kits, which were pretty fun, but they're only really useful one-on-one. -on -one. So it'd be pretty nice to get like the entire gang together and we can play like a 4v4. Trail of Mystery, Biomass Mutilation, Bounty of Zuxa, Saga Muller, Strific Resonator, Darkwater Catacombs, Exotic Orchid, Leona Wares, Shrine of the Forsaken Gods, Sunken Hollow, Tespian. If you guys are going to be getting any of these, tell me which one you prefer. Well, after we're done, anyway. Because I'm thinking of playing this one, because I tend to like black and green. Blue, I'm not too sure. There didn't seem to be a lot of counter cards in this deck, but it kind of scales up with the leaders, so we'll see. Plenty of time, anyway. Oh, a lot of forest. And an Ash Baron. A Bog. Commander Tower. Tamer Aqueduct. Evolving Woods. I like how they all have this little symbol on them to tell you that they're only being used in Commander. Guild Gate. Rock Farm. Jungle Hollow. Myriad Landscape. Opulent Palace. Willinkry Tower. Sorry if I'm going a little bit fast on this one, like, 400 cards is just, there's a lot to get through. And I really don't want this to become a half hour video. I'll strive for it anyway. Torn Falls, Woodland Stream, and there we go. We're with this one card. Next up we have Mystic Intellect. Get right into this one. Probably should open them from below. See, that's what a smart person would do. Ah, there we go. Slides right out. You see, real smart people admit their mistakes and learn from them. There we go. I'm not liking how they're putting these cards in. It's a bit hard to do it without damaging the card. All right, just pop it out. There we go. There you go. Savine Chronoclasm. Put him over here. Over here, where there's no glare. Okay, so this deck box is more reddish. Comes with a mystic intellect on the side. Okay, open this one up. And here we go. Okay, same as last time. Different paragraphs though. Okay. Sivine the Chronoclasm. Sivine is a wizard with a taste for adventure and a love of exploration. Trained at the Tor Tolorian Academy, he grew restless when his studies and, as soon as he gained his wizard powers mantle, left to roam the world. A gifted sorcerer with an encyclopedic knowledge of the arcane arts, he relies on his magical prowess to aid him in escape thieves across the Maria. Dominaria. Elsha of the Infinite. As the first ever Daijin to earn the title of Head Abbot at the Sage Eye Stronghold, Elsha is more than capable to lead. Strong, patient, and wise, she is unparalleled master of martial magic, using her quick reflexes to cast spells in the blink of an eye. Pramnikon Sky Rampant. Rapper? Rapart. On a plane per per perpetually cloaked in mist, a mystical, a mysterious wall rises from the surface of the ocean. It seems to have no end, stretching for miles in either direction. Anyone who approaches it finds themselves suddenly veering off towards unexpected destinations, as though an unseen hand is determined to steer them away. And lastly, Gerald, Wetter Life Hero. Gerald Capuchin was the culmination of Uzar's bloodline project. The perfect warrior, meant to inherit Uzar's legendary legacy and destroyed the Paroxian threat to the Monaria once and for all. Though he struggled to accept his destiny, 
In the end, he sacrificed himself to protect those dear to him. To this day, he is remembered as the savior of Dominaria. What a nice guy. Okay, so our primary commander is Sevion, the Chronoclasm, and secondary commander is Elja of the Infinite, Pyramuk, and Sky Rampant. The Mystic Intellect deck is built upon a complex system of synergies that reward all of you casting spells from your graveyard, especially instants and sorceries with flashback. Salvan, the Chronoclasm, gives you access to an additional instance of the first spell on each turn, so get him to play before you get the fireworks. His damage prevention ability deters opponents' attacks and keeps you from blowing him up with damage-dealing spells like Magma Quake. Your deck also depends on lots of artifacts and enchantments to generate mana, draw cards, and defend yourself. Elja of the Infinite combines well with these cards, helping you to churn out your deck and finding more spellcasting material. The ability to cast non-creature spells as instants from the top of your deck makes attacking into open mana especially dangerous for your opponents. But make sure you can capitalize on that by developing your board. You'll need to be building a mana advantage and win the long game with some huge spells. Defense-wise, commander games, and no commander plays defense quite like Pumrican Sky Rampant. Many of your games will feature at least one particularly aggressive player, and Pumrican keeps them pointed at other opponents. Try to keep it protected, or you might find yourself on the receiving end of your entire group's attack when taking turns. However, sometimes you may need to just let it die to the point of the dangerous player in a different direction. Okay. Again, we have the rules. Just gonna open this up. Here we go. Whoops. Savan, currently going for around $20, I believe, around 15 euros. We'll see how that keeps up. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to Savan. When you cast your first instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard each turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. All right, that's not too bad. Actually, that's pretty good. Then again, the first deck kind of counteracts against it, so... Elja of the Infinite Prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets a 1-1 until the end of your turn. You may look at a top card of your library at any time. You may cast the top card of your library if it's a non-creature, non-land creature. And you may cast it as though you had flash. Well, that's pretty decent. Oh. Pramikon Sky Rampant. He's a flying defender. As Pamrican, Sky Rampant enters the battlefield, choose left or right. Each opponent may attack only the nearest opponent in the chosen direction, and Planewalker is controlled by that opponent. Here we go. Here's the spirit token. Reveals a human when you flip it over. And the art in the human is pretty nice. Loving these full art tokens. Pegasus! I wonder if he knows about dual monsters. Drake? Huh. Okay. So are they all humans on the inside? I believe we're all humans. <laughs> the real treasure are the humans we make along the way. Cliffside Rescuer. Leadership Vacuum. The Thirsty Blade. Skalsa. Ghostly Prison. Reminds me a little bit of Byakuga from Bleach. Prismatic Stands, Purify the Graves, Ray of Distortion, Deep Analysis, Fact or Fiction, Forever in Denial, All this Grace, Unica. Oh, so this one really plays with the blue, which makes sense. There's a lot of nice blue spell cards. So Field Removal with the red. Rolling Trembler, Crackling Drake. You can't have a blue red deck without a Crackling Drake that focuses around spell cards. Okay, so there's a tricolor here. So it's white, blue, and red. Acclamation, Discount, Mass Diminish, Dark Slide Extortionist, Ignite the Future, 
not too sure you guys can hear that, but there's a plane currently flying over me. So, oh, okay. Pristine Angel. Flying. As long as Pristine Angel is untapped, it has protection from artifacts and from all colors. Whenever you cast a spell, you may untap Pristine Angel. Okay, it's pretty decent, but it costs 6 mana to put out, so take it out with a grain of salt. Sin Titan. Vigilance. Whenever Sun Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return that permanent card with murder mana cost 3 from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, so just going to let you guys pause the video if you want to read any of these, because I don't want to make it too long. But it sounds as if it really wants you to persist with a graveyard. You managed to get Leyland of Sanctity against this. I'm pretty sure it will just deny this deck pretty straight away. Jesus Sanctum. So the chances of getting like one of those is pretty slim. And I don't really plan on like altering these decks anyway. I really like how Wizards is managing to build some pretty nice balanced decks so I've seen so far. Uh, fingers crossed that this will be one of them. I can tell you more about it on Monday if you want to, I don't know, listen to my thoughts about if this is a good buy, if this is something that you should probably pick up for your, like, a group of friends who don't play Magic but just want to like play Commander, then let me know. I'll give you my full review on it when push comes to shove. A lot of planes and islands. They could have done a little bit of the, I don't know, art on the mana. Like you did with the guilt kits. Honestly, it doesn't really cost that much. I suppose they gotta save that for something. Mountain. Oh, this one gets an Ash Baron as well. Azorus Chancery. Boris Garrison. Boris Guildgate. Command Tower. Evolving Wilds. Highland Lake. Is it Boulderwalk? Is it Guildgate? Myriad Landscape, Mystic Monastery, Stone Query, Swift Water Cliffs, Temple of the False Gods, Terramorphic Expanse, Tranquil Cove, Windscarred Crag, and Discover More Magic. There you go, everybody. Sorry for the interruption, everyone. Just gonna get this open now. A couple of my friends just popped on by. It's almost like they don't know I'm trying to make a Match of the Gathering video today. Oh, sugar, I just to do the other side. There we go. And we pull this out. There we are. Give you a nice look at the card. Jared, Conclave Exile. When Jared, Conclave Exiles enters the battlefield, create a 4 4 Rhino token with Trample. Whenever Jared attacks, populate. The token enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. To populate, create a creature token that's a copy of a creature you control. Okay. Okay, open this one up. Same as the others. Okay, so the primary planeswalker will be Jared, Conclave Exile. A former member of the Salvian's Conclave, Jared shifted his legions to the Ghoul clans after witnessing the awe-inspiring manifestation of the Razbor during the War of the Spark on Ravnica. Even though he is Ghoul, he maintains both a connection to Salvian's Down, magic, and a deep love for his animals. He won't hesitate to call on boars and other creatures to aid him in his destructive activities. Okay. Atla Pellini, Nest Tender. Atla Pellini considers all life precious, especially those creatures that have not yet hatched. Noble of the Sun Emperor. She is blessed with a deep, unique bond, one that allows her to connect with dinosaurs while they're still in the egg. By encouraging and guiding them before they hatch, she ensures the connection between the Sun Empire and dinosaurs will never falter. Marisi, Breaker of the Coil. Marisi rebelled against the structured civilization of his people, starting a civil war on Naya that ended in destruction of the Cloud Empire. Swift and ferocious, he was fiercely protective of his pride and savage towards outsiders. Hundreds of years later, his descendants still celebrate his memory, including the tribe of Naktal that the planeswalker Ajali, Goldmane, was proud of. 
the Minotaur. Okay, so this one is Tangard, first mate. The Minotaur, first mate of Wetterlight, is gruff and intensely loyal. He also easily angered and loathed to back down from a fight. To him, there's no problem that can't be solved by throwing a punch or stubble. He's proud of his abilities as a brawler and isn't afraid to prove his promise. Okay, so how do we play this? Okay, so Jared is our main commander. Secondary is Apple Panini, Nest Tender Mercy, and Breaker at the Coil. Playing the deck, overrun the deck with an army of massive token creatures while playing Primal Genesis. You may remember this Lenius uh, <laughs> Conclave Populate mechanic from Return to Ravnica. It's a form of token generation that lets you copy tokens you already have. Jared, Conclave Exile, has defect defected to the Gruul clans and brought them this power. Cards with Populate combo well with red cards to create temporary token creatures with haste. The copy may not have haste, but they will also not be temporary. Jared lives for war, but Atla Pelini, Nest Tender, prefers to keep things peaceful. Populating beast tokens is great, but have you ever built a nest of eggs? Atla Pelini knows everything there is to know about hatching huge dinosaurs, but your deck has many different kinds of monsters. Hatch those eggs as quickly as you can while Atla Panini is in play. They won't summon anything without her in the battlefield. Marzi, Breaker of the Coil, is best known for inciting civil war among the Nakla of Arlara, and this card brings that aggression to your commander games. Marisi's presence on the battlefield puts every opponent on high alert, but connecting just once can throw their best played plans into disarray. In addition to protecting you from counterattacks, Marisi's goad ability might leave your opponents without blockers making them very vulnerable to your next attack. Okay. Put this over here. Put this card over here. And let's take a look at the deck. Goes without saying, Jared Conclave Exile is the most expensive card in this deck. Okay, have a good look at Jared in his non-giant form. Atman, Pellini, New Tender, Marisi, Breaker of the Coil. Same clan as a genie, a Johnny. So Heart Piercer Manticore. Flip it over, we get our Dragon Fillet, Angel of Sanctums, and we get Horror. Oh no, look how terrifying that is. Bird, getting a sculpture, bird again, another sculpture, beast, we get a full art worm, another beast token, centaur, we get an egg, Eldorons, another egg, a rhino, also an egg, and gargoyle, who is also an egg, cliffside rescuer, hate mirage, Voice of Many, Scared Tiller, Untangable Virtue, Rock X. So, okay, so this is a tri-color deck as well. So green and white. I'm missing a color, but I'm pretty sure I'll show up pretty soon. I think it's red now. Elemental Bond, Explorer, Farseek, Pack Leader, Harmonize, Sakura, Tribe Elder. Lysen Tuan, Naya Charm, Thundering Grout. Okay, so this deck basically focuses around populating and creating massive amounts of tokens. Pretty sure we can play that card from... can't remember the name of it. But it lets you return all creatures to your hand, and if you have more than four, you get to return one to the battlefield. I remember using it quite recently in the M20 and I just demolished this other guy. That was pretty fun. Okay, Angel of Sanctions. Flying when Angel of Sanctions enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-permanent and opponent controls until he disappears. For Emblem, 5. Exile this creature from your graveyard. Create a token as a copy of it, except it's a white zombie angel with no mana cost. Emblem only as a sorcery. Okay, so he's a pretty sticky creature. Also playing a brand new, oh, another planeswalker. Okay, a tree, tree, beast creature. 
From minus 3, you can draw cards equal to your greatest power among the creatures you control. And minus 6, create a 6-6 six, six worm creature token for each land you control. Oh my. That's pretty... That's too good. But it's 5 mana, so... Take a little bit of time where you can play it. Oh my. Dissonant Twin. Hour of Reckoning. Phoenix Rebirth. Flame Rush Rider. Heart Piercing Metacore, Fresh Meat, Momentous Fall, Rampaging Ballots, Second Harvest, Shamic Revelation, Tug Fisk, Emera Tendris, Growing Ranks, Wayfaring Temple, Mimic Bat, Soul Foundry, okay, and a bunch of dual cutter lands, I assume. Hmm, only one dual cutter land. Yep, yeah, spoke too soon again. I really do wish that they had the little thing on them. Like even a symbol. Would have been pretty nice. Mountain, mountain. Actually for like, I think normally these things go for around 40 to 45 euros. But if you check online, I'm pretty sure there's a couple of places selling them for like 35. You buy them in a bundle as well, so. Yeah, another discount. Just remember to message the seller. Personally, I'm not stocking any of these myself. Simply because the parts of these aren't that great. But in terms of an actual product, I think these are pretty nice. Haven't seen... I mean, they're a major improvement from last year anyway. Crows and Verge. Myriad Landscape. Land of Paranormal. Rogue's Passage. Rogue Highlands. Sanctuary. Terramorphic Expanse. And Discover More Magic. Oops, sorry for the cut, everyone. The camera just kind of gave out for a second. But... Let's finish this off with NG Vulcanite. Just a second. I believe this man is currently the least valuable of all of the uh, Planeswalkers that are exclusive to the Commander decks. Going for around 5 bucks at the moment. Okay. So, NG, Falcorin. The Falcorin vampires of Innistrad are feared for their salvagery. NG, Falcorin, one of the eldest scions of her line, is cruel even by their standards. Oh, it's a woman. My apologies. Fruitless and rootless and <laughs> relentless, she is determined to reclaim her ancestral home and restore the glory of the Falcorin line, and she won't let anybody or anything stand in her way. Shainer, Nightmare Adept. There you go. A fiercely loyal member of the Cabal, the young Chainer learned to fight and wield his Dementia magic in the Cabal fighting pits. With the power to harness dreamscape visions and give them solid form in the real world, Chainer can unleash a horde of nightmare creatures against his opponents. Graven, Predator Captain, over here. Forced to be Volvrat's second in command, Galvern has informed from a human into a biomechanical servant, unable to break free from Balrog, he vented his rage on anyone around him. He was eventually defeated in a duel with Tangart, the first mate of the Wetter Light. Okay, Kyrex, son of Nawat, Yagmat. The Farrix sleeper agent, Karak was once human, but millennia spent trapped in a time rift altering beyond recognition. Karak spent Thousands of years creating an army of minions and devouring them to amplify his power, all for the day he would break free and destroy the island of Teloria. In the end, he was defeated by Uraz. Here we go. And the play style. Merciless Rage. Lose yourself in insanity and unleash merciless rage upon your opponents. The core of this deck is the madness of mechanic, which makes some of your spells castable as you discard them from your hand. Angie Fulcrumot replaces each of those cards as you do discard them, tearing through your deck to find your best cards. Don't discard all your lands, though. That mana will come in handy later when you start finding ways to grab creatures back from the graveyard. Speaking of necromancy, Chainer, Nightmare Adept, both enables your madness cards and fuels your secondary team reanimation. This commander will help you build creature combos and keep them on the table. Don't make the mistake of being too aggressive too early. Your deck has lots of combos that can be defeated, that can defeat multiple combat opponents in one swoop. Try to stay out of everyone's crosshair and quietly build around your biggest sources of damage. Graven, Predator Captain, is precisely the opposite. 
Griffin works best if you start attacking early and often. Toss your smaller creatures overboard and in order to churn true your deck for new threats and buff Griffin's commander damage. This commander is excellent with creatures that return from the graveyard, high, have high power or you pay life for powerful effects. Fortunately, you can find all three in black and red, so look through your collection and constrict your predator crew. Okay, so it's a red and black deck. So unlike the other ones, this is just dual color. Okay. I believe the little seal is over here. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Take that off. And here we go. NG, Falcon Rot. Here you are in all this oh 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 sugar. In all this glory. NG Falcon Rot. Ace, discard a card. Whenever you discard a card, if you have madness, untap NG. Okay. Chainer, Nightmare Adept. There you go. Graven Predator Captain. Okay. So not too bad. Menace. It gets X and X for the amount of life you lost this turn. Alright. Five mana. Okay. Zombie token. Creepy zombie token. Zombie token. I think there's a team going on here. Huh. Ten percent of the deck is zombies. Okay. Meyer and Madden Misery. Ace Mirage. Bloodthirsty Blade. Scare Teller, Big Game Hunter, Call to the Netherworld, Dark Wuttering, Fate of the Devoted, Gorgon Recluse, Grave Scrobbler, Murderous Compulsion, Nightshade Assassin, Plague Crafter, Senatorium Skeleton, Elvis Reborn, Alright, Zombie Infestation, Alchemist Griefing, Fiery Temper, Levenant Whisper, Violet Eruption, Armory Sphere, Hedron Archive, oh, a Meteor Golem, yeah, it's a bit odd to see. But again, it does remove stuff, so. Archfiend of Spite, Bone Vizier, Curse of the Fool's Wisdom, Crux Son of Yachbard. Alright, so this is the one that was lost himself in the Time Void. For each dark mana in a cost, you may pay two life rather than paying that mana. Hmm, not bad. My Phoenix, my Devil's Aeon Engine. I heard this one is pretty good. Aeon Engine enters the field tap, costs five mana, and you can tap it. It exiled the Aeon Engine. Reverse the game's turn order. Oh my! Oh, that's pretty good. So instead of going clockwise, you can go anti-clockwise. Champion of Stray Souls, Lord of Vault, Obnoxious. Hmm. Destroy target creature. Draw one card. You lose one life. And target opponent gets an emblem. Whenever a player draws a card, you lose two life. Hmm. Pretty neat. Premier of the Dead. Beacon of Unrest. Doom Necromancer. From under the floorboards. Hideous Strove. Crocon's Wake. Overseer of the Dam. In Judgment. Chaos Warp. Flyer of the Hatebound. I guess a Wheel. Squee. Goblin that boot. Occultus, Warstorm Surge, Blood Hall Priest, Key to the City, Solemn Sakurum, Drowned Temple, Exotic Orchid, Reach Sanctorium, Swamp, or Swamp, Mountain, 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 or Mountain. Hmm, I believe there's a lot of land in this. I kind of wish that they had a little thing where you can just choose not to take the lands because, I mean, if you play this game long enough, then you're just going to have like a mountain of the mountains. <laughs> Forgotten Cave, Memorial Elty, Dread of Mire, Myriad Landscape, Rakdos Carnium, Guild Gate, Rick's Murder, Dungeon Palace, Expanse, Temple of the False Gods, and Discover More Magic. Alright everyone, thank you very much for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more of my content. And uh, 
I hope you all have a nice day. See you next time. Bye.